Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how I made this beautiful African print shirt. It has two pleats in front instead of a dart and also a waistband and two nice side pockets. So make sure you like, subscribe and share with your friends that enjoy sewing as much as we do. So thank you so much guys. So guys, we're starting off our pattern paper because we're making pattern first. We'll be needing our pencil to make temporary mark and our marker to make permanent mark. We we'll needing a tape rule to take down measurement and we we'll needing our pattern or our paper scissors. We we'll needing calculator to make calculations, yes, and we we'll needing our pattern master to make straight and curved lines. We we'll be needing this pretty African print because that's what we're working on. So guys, I'll just be setting those things outside so we can work. So I'll be running a vertical line to make our starting point. Then next thing I'll be doing now is to divide my hip measurement by four. So that's how you see me do. I'll divide my hip measurement by four, then mark that on the reason on the vertical line. Sorry. So I'm trying to like explain. I'll mark it here. Then I'm going to mark it on the horizontal line so to make it square. So my hip measurement is 35. So that is 35 divided by five, which is 8.75. That is peculiar to me, please. That's my hip measurement 35. So I'll take 8.75 on that line. Then I'm going to rule it on the horizontal line also. So just watch closely, guys. So I'm going to make I'm going to rule that up to just to make a perfect square. So I'll take my pattern master now to rule the line. I'll just rule that very well so we can see it. Then I'm going to rule a vertical line there also. So that is going to serve as a guide to make our crotch points just watch closely so the next thing i'll be doing now is to take the hip line measurements the normal hip line measurement as if you are making a skirt so i'll be using eight inches here so yes i'll be using eight inches here so i just mark that and i'm going to rule eight inches remember i didn't mark my hip i didn't mark it on the my hip measurement divided by four i marked the hip line separately so that is my hip line why we divided that hip measurement by four is just to give us a reference for our crotch so now for the crotch now from that um, square that we made i'll be going down by two inches so that's like a reference if you did not um like measure your client you can just do it this way and it's going to be a perfect fit trust me i'm just making that to be sure of them um, to be sure that I'm, make, I'm marking two inches so i'm going to rule that and i'm going to commit to the marker in our rule and next now this you just draw that line just Put that line down so yeah so we have in our crotch line so next thing i'll be doing now is to take the um tie measurement which is our tie divided by two my tie divided by two is 20 my tie measurement is 21 so my tie measurement divided by two is 10.5 so now but what you can do again is to divide your hip measurement see that we are making reference to our hip measurement to so divide your hip measurement by 20 so when I divide my hip measurement by 20, that gave me 1 point or 1.5, I guess. So I'll just add 1.5 to what I have there. No, 1 point, yeah, around 1.5. So I just divide your hip measurement by 20. So I just mark that. So I'm trying to like check if it correlates with what I have if I divide my tie measurement by 2. It was accurate. So you can do it this way. Either you divide your tie measurement by 2 or just divide your hip measurement by 20, then add it. On the other side of the line so now i'll be making a curve our crotch depth that is going to be our crotch depth so now the next thing i'll be doing now is to, it's very simple honestly is to take my short measurement my short measurement that i'll be working with is 16 inches so you can make yours longer you can make yours shorter if you want to i'm working with 16 inches without adding seam allowance without adding seam allowance or aiming allowance so i'll just take 16 inches there and I'm going to rule that. I'm going to rule that horizontal line. I'm going to rule that horizontal line. We are not done yet. So thank you. So just watch. Uh. So the next thing I'll be doing now is I don't want a tight fit short. So I'll just be going in by 0.75 inches. 0.75 inch. So I'll just use the curved part of my pattern master to just rule that line from the crotch depth to the M line, like you see me do. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to work on our waist because we are not using an elastic band, we are using an actual waist band. So working on our waist now, I'll be using my exact waist measurement, which is my waist measurement divided by four. 
So my waist measurement is 24. 24 divided by 4 gave me 6 inches. So I'll be adding 1 inch as similar as that allowance. Sorry. So that's what, be, that's what I'm just calculating. 24 divided by 4 gave me 6 inches. So I'll be adding 1 inch as that allowance. So just watch, guys. So I'm marking that and I'm going to add 1 inch as my dart intake. So I'm going to mark that and also use my pattern master to just rule the line connect the line from my hip from my waistline to my hip line yeah so that's what i just did there so the next thing i'll be doing now is to take in our dart remember we are not using our dart i'm still going to like split this pattern into two but that's not what we are doing i just want to take in my dart as a reference line as a guide because we're using this pattern to make the back so i took in my nipple to nipple measurement which is my bust pan then I took down 5 inches. So that's what you're saying. Dude. My nipple nipple is 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I just... My dart to take is 3 inches. So I'm going to rule my dart line. Honestly, this part is... You can skip this part if you want to, but... I'm just ruling my dart line, sure. My dart, I want to do my dart leg now. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do my dart. And... If you've watched this far, kindly subscribe to my channel and kindly like my video and also leave a comment if you find anything confusing. I'm going to explain better or try and explain my best. So the next thing I'm doing now is to cut this pattern. So that's what you're saying. I just cut the pattern. Remember, we didn't add any seam allowance to this pattern. All the seam allowance that I'll be adding, I'll be adding it on fabric. Yeah, I'll be adding it on fabric. This is just a pattern paper without a seam allowance. And please just enjoy watching the video. So now I've gone ahead to everything I did in front. I just copied my front pattern using my tracing wheel on another pattern paper. Then I leave I left some extension. So I left extension on the waistline. I left about two inches on the waistline. Then I left some extension on this on both sides. Sha. So now what I'll be doing now is to just extend my crotch points for the back. The pattern we copied on another fabric on another um, pattern paper. I'll just rule that down. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to modify this pattern to our back pattern. I'm just going to make that line like bright so we can see it very well. I'm just marking every broken line so it can be very visible for us. So I'll be changing my marker. I'll be using another marker color so we can like differentiate between the front and the back. You, you get that just watch so the next thing i'll be doing now to modify our back is to go in from that line by one inch i'll go in by one inch just watch i'm just going by one inch then on the waistline to at that point just make sure you watch this video watch it like i'm going to go in by one i'm going to go in by two inches then on the upper part i'll go up by 1.5 inches Again, 1 inch, 2 inch, then 1.5. So I'm going to connect those lines, those dots together. I'm going to connect them. It's going to be a slant line. It can't be straight. So it's going to be a slant line. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to connect those lines together. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to take our waist measurements now. The back waist measurements. I'll measure what I have on the front. Then I'm going to put that on the new line that we made for our back. So I'm going to just measure that now. I'm using my hand to demonstrate. So I'm just going to use that line as a guide. I'll measure my waist for the front and replicate that on the new line we made for our back, the new slant line. So that's what you see me do. So I'm just going to put down that measurement there. So make sure it's accurate so you don't have shortage of um, measurements or fabric. So I'm just going to connect. That's all. I'm going to connect. I'll make sure... I extend that side of my waist because we want it to touch like so it won't be like the one side is longer than one side so I'm just going to connect that so I'm just going to like remark it just to be very sure yeah to be very very sure so I'm going to take my waist measurement again there at that point then connect so you see that it's a slant too just to accommodate the way the body is the boot is shaped so that's what I'm trying to demonstrate with my hand so the next thing I'll be doing now is to go to our crush point and measure the new tie measurement 
I'll measure the new hip line, the new tie measure. I'm going to measure everything because we've taken some fabric in already, making that slam. So I'm just going to take that in again. So what I, ha I had in initially on the front, I'm just going to duplicate that from the slant line to wherever it marks on the pattern paper. I just hope that's well explained. Explained, well explained. So I'm just going to connect the new hip line to the new waist line that we made for the back. So the green marker is for the back. The blue was the one we duplicated for the front. You understand? So the next one I'll be doing now is to measure the new tile measurement, the new tile line. So just watch. I'm going to go to the um, M line and just go, just go out by one inch and just connect from that hip to the M line and that is all for our back measurement side. So I'm just going to make that place more make that place more visible. My marker is kind of breaking. I'm so sorry. So now the next one we're doing now is work on our back crotch depth. So our back crotch depth, I'll first go up by make a perpendicular line of one inch at that point. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to divide our hip measurements by 10. Remember for the front we did 20. So now for the back we'll be doing 10. I'm going to divide it by 10, so that is going to give me 35 divided by 10 is going to give me 3.5. So I'm going to put 3.5 there. So I'm using my calculator to calculate that. So 35 divided by 10 gave me 3.5. It is peculiar to me because it is my measurement. So I'm just going to go from that slant line, that place we took. I'm just going to go out by 3.5 inches. Then rule the line. Just make it straight. And we have our new crotch depth. So I'm going to make this M um, curve because we can't just leave it that way. I'm going to make the curve. And let's see me do that. I'm trying to manipulate my pattern master to fit to get each point. That um, perpendicular line we made, the beginning and everything to just mark the line so to give us a perfect fit. So what I'll be doing now on my inseam for the pants, for the short rather, I'm going to be going out like from that front i'm going now by 0 0.5 inch so i'm just going to use that as a guide so just watch closely so i'm going to connect the new crotch depth to the new inseam measurement so that is all for the back so now the back has a dart we're using a dart for the back so i'm going to be making the back dart now the back dart is not a straight dart it is always slam so what we're doing now is to divide my waist measurement by two so just watch closely I'll divide my waist measurement by two. So I'll place my paper, then find the midpoint. Find the midpoint, and I'm going to put that as my new, as my dart measurement. Remember, for the front we did a nipple point, but for the back we'll be dividing in the back waistline by two. That's for the back. So that's between the back dart and the front dart. So I'm just going to divide them part by two. Then take a slant line. See that I'm not making it straight. Mm -mm, it's not straight. It's going to be slant. So I'm just going to measure. I'm going to go in by six inches. My that leg is six inches. So I'm just going to make a slant line. So that way I'm saying you do. So that it's not straight. It is slant. So the next thing I'm doing now is my dart intake of 0 0.5 inch on both sides. So 0 0.5 inch, 0 0.5 inch, and I'm just going to connect. From that point to my dart leg so that's going to serve as our dart that i'll be taking it for the back and that is all for the back we're just going to be cutting our pattern so we can transfer everything we've done on pattern to our fabric remember there was no seam allowance added to this pattern so please guys make sure you add seam allowance when you are sewing and when you are cutting your fabric so that is the front and that is the back pattern so the next thing i'm doing is just to keep our pattern outside so we can work on the front because the front has a pocket so I want to make a pocket, a side pocket. So that's what yes, that's what you can see me do now. So I'm going for my side pocket. I'm going to go in by 1.5 inch on the side seam, on the side seam. So I'll go down by seven. You can use seven inches or six inches, depending on how deep you want your pocket to be. So me, I'm just, I just want it to be moderate. I'm going in by six inches. So I'm just going to rule that down as a line. So I'm not going to cut in, I'm not going to be cutting that part of my fabric. I'll just use my tracing wheel to trace it on another paper as you, you see me do it in this video now. 
so i'm going to get another scrap this is a scrap pattern i don't want to waste my pattern paper so i'll be doing now is just measure if it's going to fit for my pocket which is six inches and yes it, it was a good fit but now fold it into two then place my front pattern then i'll place my front pattern on it i'll make sure the waistline i'll make sure it's straight so i'm going to like just this is a scrap pattern a scrap pattern paper i'm going to make sure that it's straight manually so i'm just going to like rule that and just check if it's very straight so i'm measuring where i want it to be and i want it to be so i'm going to mark that scrap paper if you have fresh pattern paper you don't need to go through the stress i'm trying to be economical so that's what i'm doing so i'm just marking that and i'll rule a line so i'll just be trimming that off sure it's not needed it's not necessary i'll be trimming that off i'll just trim that off so again this pattern is um six inches wide and about each eight inches or nine inches long so the length is nine inches the width is six inches so i'm just going to trim so it like trace my side seam on the pattern just watch so i'm going to use my scissors to just trim that off i'm just going to trim that off so that's what you're saying to do i'm just going to trim that off yeah so i'll trim that and also the upper part that i don't need so that is not necessary so now we have our pocket bag and our pocket so i'm going to use my tracing now to trace my pocket opening that i was supposed to like cut which i've gotten on fabric i've gotten it on fabric just watch i didn't i want to use this pattern in the future so that's why i'm not like making so much cut on it so just watch i'm going to put i'm going to fold that part in when i want to cut on fabric so now i already made the line like i already traced it on my pattern paper for the pocket the one busy for, for pockets so remember i folded it into two so i'll be cutting one part which is going to serve as a line so now next thing i'm doing now is to make like a curve because we don't want our pocket straight you can make a curve just to make it more interesting i'm going to make a curve i'll use my pattern master i'll use my pencil first to just draw the line then if i like it i'm going to commit to my marker so just follow me closely so the next thing i'm doing now is to use, i like it so i'm using my marker now to mark the line very well and that's what you're seeing me do i'm going to use my marker now to make a, com a more committed mark so i'll trim that off and also one side of the paper just one side not both sides i'm going to trim that line off i'm going to trim that off so that is going to serve as our pocket facing and our main pocket which is the pocket bag is going to be the other side that we didn't cut i've gotten one online and i've gotten one on fabric so i'm just going to fold that in i'm just going to fold that in very well and there we have our nice complete front so we have the pocket bag the pocket facing and our front so now we'll be cutting on fabric so the next thing i'm doing now is to extend that line because we want to add like a pleat in front the pleats you saw at the beginning of the video so if you don't want that you can just like make it that normally and just carry on with your sewing but me i want to more i want to add more volume to the um, down part so i'll be using a pleat to add volume so i'll be really nice divide my front pattern into two equal half i've divided my front pattern into two then i'm going to trim i'm going to cut the middle so that's what you see me do I'm just going to like cut it. So I'm, I'm using my tape root to make the division. You can do this also if you don't want to use your calculator. Just fold. And that's it. So I'm just going to rule a straight line down. I'll rule a straight line. I'm just going to rule a straight line. Again, if you don't need this part, you can just keep and fast forward share. But me, I just wanted more volume. And it's very interesting, made the pants look so lovely. The shirt rather looks so lovely. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to cut that. So we have pattern one and pattern two. So I'll just be cutting that line. I'll just be cutting that line. So I used my waist as a guide to rule the line. So I'm just going to name that as pattern one. You see me I'm going to mark, although they are two, they look so different, but I'll just be on the side one and two one and two 
the next thing I'm doing now is to cut on our fabric. So I'm, I've already laid my fabric now on fold. Guys, it's on fold, wrong side. I'm right side facing each other on fold. So I'm going to put pattern one on the fabric. I'll be leaving space for seam allowance. Remember, space for seam allowance because we didn't add seam allowance on pattern paper. So I'm going to put pattern one there, then pin that to pin the pattern to my fabric. So I'm just going to get my pat my pin and just pin. I'll just pin. So make sure you pin just to secure it, and I'll pin the second part too. So I'm going to be taking two inches different, like from one from pattern one to pattern two. I'll be making two inches line. So our plate is going to be two inches. Yeah. So we'll be adding a volume of two inches. So I'm just marking and um, putting my pattern two on. The two inches mark. So the next thing I'm doing is to add seam allowance. So I'm using the seam allowance of 0.5 inch. You can use the seam allowance of one inch if you want. For me, I'm comfortable with 0.5 inch. So I'll be adding that round on that at the inseam and also the crotch point at the crotch line. The other thing I do, I'm adding my seam allowance of 0.5 inches. Adding it, adding it, adding it, adding it. So yeah. This area was so fun. Making this video was fun. So make sure make it fun for me by watching it because I made it specifically for you. Sitting behind your phone watching it. And make sure you tag me when you make something for yourself. Tag me on Instagram at ways on display. So guys, I added my seam allowance to 0.5 inch and I'll on the side seam also. The side part, I'm going to be adding my seam allowance. I'll be using um two I'm using 0.5 inch too. I'm using 0.5 inch too throughout the tutorial. I don't even know I was managing my fabric. But I had no fabric ball. This is mine. And it, didn't, it was not small. The seam allowance was okay for me. So I had seam allowance on the upper part. I was using to join our band to our pant, to our shorts rather. So I'm just going to use my pattern master to just make my seam allowance visible so I can cut. So I'm just going to make it visible and just roll that part make it very easy remember we'll be adding we'll be using our pocket bag our pocket interface which will be cutting on lining and on the main fabric we are going to get to that point sure so i'm just doing that very fast because something that we can do so make sure you add some allowance to at the ending line add a some allowance of one inch so make sure you do that because we didn't add on our pattern paper so that is that for the front i'm just going to set that aside so we can work on the back so for the back now, I'm going to pin and do that on fast. I'll fast forward that so I'm just going to add our seam allowance again. Uh, first of all, add our aiming allowance of one inch, then add seam allowance of 0.5 inch round, like we did to the front, so it can be balanced. So what you're seeing me do, I'm just going to add my seam allowance again. If you have watched this point, that means you've gotten value. Please subscribe to my channel and please watch to the end because. It's good to start something and finish it. So I'm just going to like mark round and also mark my M line and would cut or we'll use our pattern master to just make the line more bold and so I can see what I'm cutting. So I'm going to cut now and that will be all for the back. And now we're going to work on the pocket bag and the interface. So let's set that aside too. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm trying to separate my front and my back so I can mark my um that. But you see me do that too. So I'm just going to mark my that. So you can take your that now. Remember, we divided it and we did it on pattern. So you can just refer back to the pattern. We divided our waistline by two, then we went down with the, using the slant line by six inches and. That is all for our that. So I'll be doing that on both pieces of the back. The back is the only one carrying the that. Just give it like a nice fit at the back. So I'm just going to mark the dark the dart intake rather and that is all for the back that. So I'll set that aside. Because it's just what we did at the other side, shall we just do it there again? So that is all. I'm just going to use my scissors to make notch. So it can, so we can just like mark on both sides. So just make it very accurate. So I'm just going to rule the line and 
Oh yeah, see me doing. Let me read the line and that is all for the back. It's all for the back. So for the front too, I'll just show you what it looks like. The front and the back, they are matching well. The front is sitting pretty on the back and it's nice. So the next thing we do now is to cut our pattern, our pocket pattern. That is for the lining and this one, I'm cutting it on the main fabric. So I'm going to fold my fabric in a way that it's going to accommodate the pocket bag. So I'm just going to pin and add seam allowance round. Seam allowance of 0.5 inch. Round it again just as we did to the front and the back. So we are, all the allowance we are using now, put it to rise 0.5. So if you are using a, a seam allowance of 0.5, just make sure you mark it round on everything you are doing. If you are using a seam allowance of 1, just make sure you make, mark it round on everything you are doing. So everything can be very, very balanced. So that's what you're saying. I'm just pinning that and I'm adding my seam allowance. I'm adding my seam allowance, just making the mark. You guys understand? You know how we do it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm making my seam allowance. I'm, when I'm done, I'm going to use my pattern master to to just make the mark bold and cut. So just enjoy watching. This video is taking time because I want to really explain everything I am doing in details. That's why. So I'm just going to cut that. And now we have a bit sewing. Now we'll be joining the front piece together. So I'll be using a French seam to join instead of using a serger to search the inside. So for the French seam, I'll be joining wrong side to wrong side, then sew on a 0.25 inch seam allowance, then turn it, then the, sew on it another 0.25 inch seam allowance. So that's what you see me do. That's a French seam. You can just sew it normally as you want it. So now I'm gonna add like old the dart for the back, and I'll be making knots on the dart. I'll just make a couple of knots just to secure it. I'm making some knots. So I'm not just to like secure it in place and the next thing I'll be doing is to sit aside the back then work on the front so it does what you see me do now so now this is the front this is the back of the front and this is the front of the front piece I'm not going to turn it now to the front so this is the front so now I'm working on the pocket so I'll be using my lining which is which is acting as our pocket interface and I'll be facing um right side to right side right side of the pocket interface and the right side of the pants itself so i'm just going to pin that in place just to secure it and pin the other side so in place then i'll be sewing on a 0.5 inch seam allowance then i'll be doing a top stitch just to hold it inside so i'll do that and i'll come back and show you what it looks like so yeah i was done doing my top stitch and also sewing it and doing my top stitch so i'm just showing you and i'll fold that inside and I'll iron when I'm done. So the next thing I'm doing now is to take in our pleats. So I'm just going to like the not the notches I made initially. So I'm just going to join it notch together just to make a pleat. And that's what you see me. So I'm just going to secure that with a pin soon. I'll secure that with a pin. Then I'll do that to the other side. Just to secure it in place. So that's what you see me do. I'm just showing what it looks like on the back. And yeah, we have our pleats already. Just showing you guys what it looks like. So the next thing I'm doing now is to add the pocket bag, the actual main fabric of the pocket bag. So I'll be joining the wrong side. Just watch this part closely. I'm just showing you like I'm trying to check for the wrong side. So I'll be joining the wrong side and the wrong side of the um, interface together. Then I'm just going to spin that in place. Just so. I want this seam to be on the inside of the pocket since I won't be surging any part of this um pan, this shirt rather. So I'm just going to sew on 0.5 inch seam allowance like it took. I'll come back and show you what it looks like now. So I'll do the same to the second side and I'll come back and show you. So this is when I was done stitching, this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to pull that in. I'll pull that in and arrange the pocket um, interface and the pocket back just to make it lay flat, make everything lay flat and make everything align very well. So I'll just pin that in place. I'll pin that in place, the side seam of the pocket and the actual um, pants, I'm um, short rather. So now what I'll be doing now is to just make sure that these things are laying flat. The, the um, shorts and the pockets are laying flat. So 
I'll go ahead to pin that for extra security so I can make a basting stitch on my sewing, sewing machine. So I've gone ahead to like um, make a basting stitch on the upper part, on both sides rather. So now I'll be showing you what we'll be doing next. So I'm just like trying to do the other part of the um, shot, the other side of the pocket. That's what you're seeing me do. I'm doing that very well so it can lay really flat. I had to like take out that seam because it wasn't laying flat, so that's why I came back to like do it on camera. I just done that off camera, but well, they're ready. So now it's laying flat, and I like it, so I'm going to pin again and pin the other part too. Pin that very well. Remember, we have like a pleat there, so make sure you don't like rough your pleat. That's if you're using the pleat and not in that. So I'm pin that again. Just to make sure it lays really flat because if it's not laying flat, it's going to like have like a pocket bulging, and we don't want that on our pants. It's not cute at all. So yeah, just make sure everything is accurate before you commit with a stitch. That's what you should do. It's better than taking seam out. It's better to just get this one than taking seam out. And if you make a mistake, you can always take your seam out and redo it again. So there's no harm in that both. Just make sure you're careful. So I'm going to do another basting stitch again. So I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So now I'm done making the basting stitch, and here is the back. I'm gonna have to join both back pieces together. And this is the this is the back. I left um about nine inches for zipper. Yeah. So now I'll be joining my back and front together on the side seam. So that's how you see me do now. So I'm just going to like match both together. So I'm matching. I'm starting with. I'm using a French seam again. So I'm matching um wrong side to wrong side, and I also on a 0.5 inch seam allowance. When I'm done sewing, I'm going to come back and fold that in again. So I'm doing. I'm sewing the crotch uh, together, which is like the inseam. So I'm going to join the inseam together. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use pin to secure that point. To secure it really well so it's not going to shift on our sewing machine because each seam has to like lay together so i'm just going to i'm using a french seam again so i'm um, i joined wrong side to wrong side and i was on the 0.25 inch seam allowance then i'll turn it to wrong side and then take my normal I mean when it's 0.25 in because remember we my seam allowance was 0.5 so 0.5 divided by 2 was 0.25 so i'm just that's what i'm trying to like explain it's french seam Maybe I'll just do a tutorial basically on how to make his friend seam. So yeah, I'm done already. I've done that already. I've done for the other side. So the next thing I'm doing now is to turn it over to the wrong side so we can take our remaining seam allowance of 0.25 in. That is if you are doing a French seam. And if you are not doing a French seam, you have a sedger or you don't mind having a rough end in your swing. It's fine also. So the next thing I'm doing is to add our band. So to do our band now, I'm going to measure my waist measurement, like measure it round, just to give me the accurate measurement I'll be using for my band, my band rather. So that's what I'll be doing now. I'm just taking the measurement round, and I'll take that measurement. I folded this piece of fabric, so I'm going to like divide what I got into two. So my waist measurement, is, my waist measurement, my waist measurement was. 24 normally but we have we need a zipper sim um, sim allowance so that should be around 12.5 so that's what i'm marking so i'm going to mark 12.5 on a fold on a fold please not um separately on a fold so i'm just going to use my scissors to just cut that off we don't need that so when we are done with that i'm going to like show you what to do next so yeah I'm going to measure my waistband length. I'm using 2.5 inch. 2 inches is the actual band. Then I'm using added 0.5 inch as seam allowance. So what I would do now is to just use my ruler to rule that down to just make a straight line so I can cut. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to like cut now. That is going to serve as our band. So I'll go ahead to like attach the band to the actual shirt. On the waist using a 0 0.5 seam allowance so I'll just trim that bit off we don't need that so I'm just making that accurate I'm just checking the measurement again to make sure that I took down the accurate measurement so yeah 
that's what I'm doing. If you've watched this far, kindly subscribe, like, leave a comment, as I always say. Yeah, thank you so much for always supporting my my YouTube channel, my videos. Thank you so much. Please make sure you subscribe. So I'm just going to like join that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna add like join the band and also use aiming glue to aim the um shots, the aim of the shot and I on the part I'll be adding my zipper. So you're going to see after after I add it, I'll show you what it looks like we So this is what it looks like after I added this zip. It has the pocket, it looks so nice, everything is looking really cute on me. So this is how you're going to dance when you finish up your pants. So make sure you do that. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave a comment and all the sweet stuff. Thank you.